All right, so today what we're gonna do is battery cables. We're gonna do a major upgrade on battery cables. We're going from, I don't know, 10 gauge wire to zero gauge wire. So what we got here, here is your old one. Here's our new one. It's essentially just welding cable. Um, what this will do is create less uh, electrical resistance in the charging, uh, the charging and starting system. It's really helpful surprisingly. So what we're going to need here is um, our spades. We're going to put big electrical spades on it and I've got quarters and five sixteenths. Always make sure you have the right ones because otherwise it ain't fun to have to drill these things out and all that stuff. But being that they're heavy duty, if we have to, we can and it won't destroy it. We're also going to put battery terminals on it. I've never used these style before but it's got a wing nut. So what we're going to do is put eyelets on each end and then from that point, we're gonna crimp the eyelets on and then solder the connection in correctly. So that way you get a nice solid connection that can't pull itself apart. And then we're gonna put heat shrink over all of it. And the reason for all of that is to create a waterproof corrosion resistant wire because corrosion is the key factor in starting and charging system failures. Because it creates more resistance the more corrosion there is the thinner the wire there is so we're going to put nice big connections on it make it corrosion resistant because when you have exposed wire guess what moisture gets in there so we're going to seal off that wire completely so the only thing getting moisture on it is the outside insulation and the actual spade itself so it should be pretty easy here so we're going to have to uh, we're going to cut the battery cable with this guy here this guy right here you just shove this thing in here and just twist it around it to get you a nice exposed end on one end of it. And then to crimp it, what we use is this guy. This guy, he will go in here like so. And then you basically, that ain't gonna do it. So I, use, I usually use a hammer and then it comes out. This is a finished product, but you can see it comes out and it pinches the whole thing around it and then put this end in the vise and clamp it down heat it up with your birds matic torch and then you just slowly feed your solder down through the top of it slide your heat shrink through this side and you're done key thing is when you go to do this end make sure you put your heat shrink on first then they're done that kind of like doing a brake line fitting without putting the flare on there or doing the flare without putting the fitting on there, you know what I mean? So, um, we'll see what the process looks like and we'll go from there. So with what I've got going on here, I've got this spade, got a little bit of clay in it, which it's really not going to hurt anything, but the problem is I've only got two of them and I need four. Well, as it turns out, I've got four of these little guys, so it doesn't want to quite fit over it super close, so we're just going to run a drill through it, ream it out, one size bigger. Meh. Doesn't hurt anything. It's just another step to the process, unfortunately. So we're going to do that, and then um, we're going to go ahead and slide our heat shrink over the other end and crimp and solder. All right, so we got all of our crimping done, and uh, that went just fine. So what we'll do now is uh, 
get this thing chopped up in the vise. Get it chopped up in the vise and go ahead and solder everything. So let's show you. Now I would uh, I would do this in real time, but it takes a while for that spade to heat up hot enough to uh, melt the solder. So we're gonna speed this whole process up here. So, like most people, I hate using electrical tape. I hate it. It sucks. But there's one trick to it that will help ensure a longer lasting connection or whatever, longer lasting adhesive connection. Um, clean everything with brake clean thoroughly. Wipe it down, whatever it takes. Clean your hands. And then slowly wrap it around there. Don't pull lengths of it and try to wrap it. No, just take the end of it and use the tape to wrap it around. The, the more that adhesive is just on what you're applying it to, the longer it's going to last. And the cleaner it is, the better, better it can actually stick to it. So take that for what it's worth. And you, it, It's not an ideal thing to use, but unfortunately, I don't have the right stuff. So we're going to have to use this crap. There you go, it's a little bit better. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm going to change out the wing nuts for just regular nylock lock nuts. You know, I've seen this before, but it was a really weird instance where the nylock wasn't allowing a good connection internally in here. So I had to replace them with like just a lock washer or a crimp nut. But either way, the reason the reason I'm doing getting rid of the wing nuts because you got to crank down the wing nut, and then later on down the road it's just going to break anyway. So you just put a regular hex head on there, half inch wrench or half inch socket, and spin her down, and it's got a lock on it, so it's not going to go anywhere. Um, and that's that's the big reason for why I'm doing it that way, because um, user friendly is my kind of friendly. See how you got it. You really got to crank this thing down, and then it gets in the way of the um, terminals and all that stuff. So we'll just pop this stupid thing off. Set that off to the side. Run that guy down onto it. Like you can, you can run a washer and stuff over it, but hell, it, it ain't gonna matter. Just try to hold your terminals in place so they don't slide on you. And boom, you got yourself the old uh, Mopar direct connection right there. So I happen to be lucky enough to work for um, a company where I can get the leftover bull crap that's we're going to throw it anyway. Um, so we change our plug wires um, just about like once a year, twice a year on these cars, these race cars I work on. But all we do is throw out the old ones. So I usually take the old stuff because it's like eight and a half millimeter wire and I snip them down and all that stuff and get new ends for them and I build my own plug wires um, because going from like a five mil wire to an eight mil wire, again, 
electrical resistance, I personally think a vehicle runs better with these. So take that for what it is. I mean, you're not going to notice a power difference. It's just going to run better. Just, it just feels smoother. So anyway, um, to do that, um, these things are like, I guess you'd call them dual insulated. You got the blue insulation on the outside, and then this is kind of like a porcelain on the inside. And inside that is the electrical wire. And that's what runs into the spade that hooks to the spark plug and hooks to your coils or wherever distributor. And then what you do is you just strip the end off it down to that bare wire, fold that thing back, take your new terminal end, and you just shove it right down in there, fold that electrical wire over it so it's making good contact in here, and crimp it down. It's as simple as that. You just gotta cut them to length and all that. Um, the parts are cheap, I think, with I don't know, I've got like 12 of these connectors, like six bucks, and then I got the wire for free, and the boots, I I just got random boots laying around. I'm sure the boots are kind of expensive if you buy them, and when I say that, I mean like probably for a whole car, like 30 bucks. So take that for what it is. I mean, if you ever want to do the, the big wire upgrade, I highly recommend it because I think it makes a difference. It runs a lot better. As for fuel mileage and all that, couldn't tell you but it probably burns the fuel mixture a lot more efficiently and a lot more effectively. <clears throat> so, fire hazards. Let's cover that. When you go to marine style terminal like this, you're moving everything up. This battery is secured, needs to be secured. Don't run without a battery hold down. It's really, really stupid. Better yet, don't even run without a fire extinguisher in your rig. So anyway, um, Hood clearance now. Hood's gonna come down, sit right here. Well, it's got little springs. Hood can bounce a little bit and ground these terminals out. That's not good, you don't wanna do that. So what I'm gonna wind up doing is I'm gonna go up here to the hood and I'm gonna mark out where these battery, where the battery lays and I'm gonna put foam and glue it to the back side of the hood. Don't know how long it's gonna last, but we're gonna try it. And see if it works because I don't want to put anything around the terminals here because then if you do something happens and this thing does catch on fire then you have to cut all this crap out and hopefully you can disconnect the battery in time to put the fire out better yet later on the road what I might do is just put a boat switch in there which all it does is supply direct power to the battery you put it in the cab you turn the switch on you got power to the battery Turn the switch off and the whole circuit is dead. The problem with that is like you kill your radio and everything. It's just like it's the same thing as disconnecting the battery with a boat switch, which eventually I'll get around to it, but we're not going to do that. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put some foam on the hood so that way when the hood comes down, the foam rests on top of this and the metal won't hit it. So, let's see how that turns out. Now, I'm no master fabricator. But pretty happy with the way this worked out. That's just a piece of uh, toolbox drawer liner with 3M adhesive on it. We'll see how long it lasts, but I'd like to come through here, tape all this, this whole edge off, and then uh, run a bead of silicone all the way around it to make it look, make it look real nice. But we'll see how long it lasts with the underhood temps and stuff like that. I'm not holding my breath on anything, but we'll uh, we'll check back later with that. All right, here would be your finished product for your battery cables. As you can see, it came out pretty well. And uh, now we just got done doing the water pump and all that stuff too to it. So, uh, anyway, anyone can do this at home. It's easy. Cheers.